Okay, so welcome back. I hope you uh, had some wonderful Dutch biscuits and tea or coffee. Um, it's always enjoyable for those of us who are not Dutch to come here and have the cookies. So <laughs> uh, I had to mention that. Uh, what we would like to do now is to, to we already, uh, I think Andrea in particular, uh, mentioned some concrete examples of institutions and um, two aspects. One was to try and reframe them in, the, in working with them, and the other one was to reimagine them, to say, well, if we can reframe uh, Chisenhale, why can't we rethink the Tate? Uh, this, is, of course, is from a certain um, point of view of agency, I suppose, and there was also, uh, Mao mentioned the difference between action and reaction, and I think this is something that will come up in this conversation. Uh, which will be uh, also about survival, but the survival of cultural institutions and particularly the survival of what one designates as the critical practice, let's say, of one's work. How, does you, how do you survive in an environment that is quite openly hostile in uh, political or ec economic ways, in a, cl in a climate that is uh, hostile to your ideas, where it's not a question of you choosing withdrawal, but where you are being pushed out or to the sides or somewhere. And um, one of the, the the things that we've 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 tried to propose and think about with this imaginary concept of former West, which is something that maybe doesn't exist, arguably, maybe it's a mirage, was also to say that with the end of the East-West divide how does that reconfigure uh, uh, the North-South conflict? Uh, and when we started the project, I think we, we definitely uh, saw that on a very, say, global scale, and with the North usually indicating Europe and uh, Northern America and the South <laughs> indicating uh, Africa, Latin America, parts of Asia. Uh, but I think uh, recent events in Europe and let's say the fallout of the credit crunch of 2008 in Europe, in the European Union even, has been a very clear political and economic uh, north-south divide. And so we want to, to look at those uh, case studies of art institutions in those two parts of the world, parts of Europe, uh, and how they react uh, to the new conditions economic and political conditions, defunding, uh, marginalization. Um, and uh, <coughs> uh, how, they, how they imagine their survival. So um, the two examples will be uh, uh, the, the, the continuation, I don't know what it's going to be, of the Athens Biennial, and Pocahiu will talk about this in a little bit, and then uh, to look at the situation here in Holland, and maybe we can see, of course, structural parallels, but we can also then see differences in how one tries to imagine survival and, and discuss that in the terms that came up. And Maria will then afterwards talk a little bit about the Dutch situation and how Bach is, is, re, is being reconfigured and reframed in that context. So maybe, Pukayu, if you could just start with saying, just saying, because I think a lot of people in this room don't necessarily know, uh, the background for the Athens Biennial and the radical kind of change you had to make uh, because of economic, let's say, disasters in Greece. Yeah, in a way that's a, a fine way to, to introduce myself because um, lately more and more we are invited in, uh, in uh, frameworks like this to speak about the situation in, in uh, Greece. And you know, Simon, a couple of times you have already mentioned reframing, which is my, I believe it's a, the answer in what we are about to, to do these two days. And um, I would like also to, to point something very clear that uh, Mao said before about reaction uh, or action, which for me is the, the major take from the earlier panel. Uh, we, we say about the pigs, that we are the, the pigs uh, of Europe, but I, I believe we are something like uh, guinea pigs now. We are just, uh, models uh, that you take into uh, to, to examine. And 
I feel like a Yanomami, you know, something like from an Amazon tribe that you're, we're just trying to dissect and see how did they survive these conditions? What kind of immune system do they have? Do they have something that we can dissect and maybe use in uh, our in, uh, pharmaceutical industry to uh, make a remedy or uh, a vaccine for the future? That's how I feel. I just wanted to share it with you. Massimilia, you, you smile because we share the same things. And um, <laughs> something very interesting is that I related a lot with what you said before. On the contrary, uh, the, vi the, the visual construction that I created as an artist of the panel uh, before, excellent panel and excellent discussion, is uh, myself um, in my summer house uh, in, uh, near Athens when uh, there is a beach and we go to the, for swimming. You know, um, everyone swims all, uh, all the summer in Greece. So it's not until late July that I go swimming because I feel it's very cold. I know that the people that come uh, in Athens go swimming from March, from April, whatever. So this uh, limbo that I'm, I'm going to portray that, we are in the, in the sea and we're discussing. And we're halfway in the sea. So we're discussing. Hello. Our visitors and friends come, come and run and jump into the sea. Whereas we and my friends that we have uh, uh, grown up in this place, we stay there and we discuss <laughs> for one hour. And we say, oh, I feel it's cold enough that my hair has uh, risen. Or my balls are freezing and I can't go in. So it's like we're, this, we're sharing this uh, limbo, this fantastic uh, uh, situation that we are in this uh, glass tower and we are able to, dis to dissect and discuss about the crisis because of the crisis is inside and outside but still which this theoretical place that is not uh, producing action in a way it's, uh, it's producing reflection yes of course but it's not uh, 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 producing action whereas the people that come or, for example, the people that uh, live in uh, Greece right now had to make radical uh, actions and uh, survive. Uh, I'm not taking any heroic uh, note here, but um, when we started the, the, the biennial, because that's what, we, what you said, I was not about to say that, but let's uh, make a, a short uh, overview of what the biennial is. Um, back in uh, 2005, it was after the post-Olympic uh, climax, we were all a very, you know, something good is happening to the economy, to the culture of Greece, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, uh, but then we sensed that uh, there were no infrastructures, nothing. So for us, uh, it was uh, either to leave Greece and go abroad, or try to make something there. By by my nature, I would stay, I would stand critical against institutions. Uh, so did my, my partners, Augustine and Xenia, back then. But we said, there's no point of being uh, critical if you don't have any foundation to stand critical against. So the most uh, active thing to do is to create a, a foundation, to create something where it didn't happen. That's why, why we, we did this uh, extremely crazy thing, because uh, you know, it's like um, jumping from a skyscraper without a parachute on. You, you can't say... You can go out and say we're doing a biennial. Biennial costs, I mean, uh, uh, a million euros, a million and a half euros, uh, the least, at least. So, us middle class people, I'm just uh, quoting now here again uh, Mao and his uh, middle class activism. We were, uh, we came forth and we said, okay, the state never does it. We know that they are uh, in the uh, drawers of the Ministry of Culture. They are uh, piled. Um, uh, reports about how to, to create a biennial, but nobody did it. So let's do it. And that's how it started, like uh, uh, over, over drinks uh, in a night as a crazy idea. And, uh, but then it was uh, the nightmare, how to, how to do it. So that's where the private money comes. So that, that, that's how um, you know, uh, the ring calls, and it's the State Department saying that we are willing to, to finance the Athens Biennial at the same time uh, I mean, uh, six months uh, alongside um, uh, after the, the initial announcement of the Biennale, and the Minister of Culture never uh, asked you in, or never um, 
uh, appealed, uh, whatever, and they initiated another Biennale in Thessaloniki. So you got this, this uh, surreal thing that happens uh, in a small country that has uh, two biennials at the same time. Uh, back then, we were kind of avant-garde in a way because we sensed that the, the barometric was high. Therefore, the the crisis was uh, in front of us. That's why we started with uh, Destroy Athens, something that was very critical about all the stereotypes about the kitsch, kitschiness of the classical Athens, and you know, live your myth in Greece, cis and sex in uh, Greek islands, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, we were very critical about that, and we started this Destroy Athens. But later on, the crisis came. And we were unprepared, and I'm not, and I'm not saying only us. I mean, all us. We were unprepared for the crisis. Uh, 2009, we were uh, numb. We were already with the gear of the first one, so it was uh, irrelevant what we did. They have in the second Biennale. It was irrelevant for the crisis, for the upcoming crisis. And then, in 2011, we were in zero massively indebted uh, from the f uh, first ones uh, without any budget. So we did the impossible. We made the, the third Biennale with no budget at all. How? That's a, a fantastic uh, conversation. We can discuss about that. Basically, we shifted from, uh, from the, um, and this is a response to you, Mark, from the actual staff to the event, from, from uh, the logistics of carrying uh, big works to the actual people, that they were uh, the theme. And I believe that, that the event is important because the event defines when. If, uh, an event creates narrative, and we live in my narratives. For, for me, at least, it's, it's extremely important to, to think of, uh, of narratives and to think of, of events. Um, and then the last one, the last uh, biennial, was done amazingly with the best ever public support we had. Why? Because it was EU money. So if you have just one question, how are you managing? I would say better than, than, uh, than before. And this, of course, I know it's a paradox. But um, as an artist, I can say that uh, we're like cockroaches in Greece. We, we survive everything. We leave no money at all. We have no, par no money for, uh, uh, for no funding for the artists or whatever. No stipends, nothing, nothing. So we were the only ones to survive. And in fact, it was massively revitalized the Athenian art scene after the crisis because new collectives uh, sprang, new squads uh, in uh, theaters like uh, Valle, we had the Theater Bros, etc., etc. All these things uh, came up um, at the same time where the society and everyone uh, impoverished after the crisis. So we are in a uh, good uh, position to say that um, now we're building something. Uh, and what are we building? We, we, uh, the only luxury that we had was to think about the model of the biennial. We think it's outdated. We needed to, to make it in order, because we needed to do it. It was the only thing that really created the Athenian art scene. But now it's outdated. The last one, we started working uh, with a curator in the same fashion that uh, big variants are, are, are being done. And we, we said that this is an outdated model because Greece has changed four times for, in four seasons between the two biennial years. Therefore, how could one single curator, possibly living abroad, be able to have the, uh, the distance and the analytical uh, tools to do something relevant, when, whereas we that lived in Greece, we were unable to understand what, what happened from uh, numbness to fear to depression to, to anger. No, anger was the first. So we, we did all these th four things within uh, four years. How could someone bring his theoretical luggage with him and say, this is the Athens Biennial 2014. It would be irrelevant. So what we said is we are totally destroying, uh, the first of all, our premises. And we made an open call. And we worked uh, with open workshops and working group meetings, uh, curatorial, and also uh, production and communication, for uh, six months. 
and what and what I now I can share with you is that working in a dense way, uh, many people together, it's not just the commons, it's not, it's not just the fad of being in a collective, and uh, which is that. Is true. It is uh, ex extremely uh, fashionable to be in a collective. At the same time, it's probably the only way to to come in pace with what happens today, in synchronicity with what happens today. Otherwise, you are just irrelevant. That's why we see uh, large-scale exhibitions <coughs> failing massively to to address uh, the present. Um, so, the from being a little bit ahead of our times and uh, envisioning the destruction, then falling short, short, and then now struggling to keep up. I'm, I'm just talking about now the, the theoretical and the purely pure, uh, uh, creative part, the pure creative part. Now we're trying to come in synchronicity with what, what happens. And I believe that in the future, uh, biennials or museums, would, would be uh, run by totally different ways. Um, I know, don't know whether they will be crowdsourced or if they will be open source. Maybe they will. Uh, in fact, I believe they will in some way. Maybe we will uh, have the, um, gov governance through an application or whatever that will be able to and enable us to, to take uh, uh, our creative work to to something to new levels and enrich it, but also administratively. Um, I have a, a small concern to, to share with you that uh, the, but by finishing with the Athens Biennale, to say that we're not in the um, just, it's not just a, uh, a north south uh, struggle going on. It's, or to be to be more precise, it's a it's a more it's a deeper northern southern struggle. I believe it's a it's a struggle of values, uh, and um, I sense this. I'm not afraid to say that it's a it's a new kind of Protestant uh, movement that's happening right now, which is taking over the South as well. With the money that comes to help uh, to help Greece, there is so many, so much discussion about what uh, um, Sana said before, in a fantastic uh, way, which which I liked, humbleness, this uh, humility, this sense of collective guilt. Uh, a couple of months ago, I was asked um, through Geta Institute to go to a, a, to make an address for the crisis in a in a. Um, in a pool of uh, entrepreneurs of, of, of Germany, hardcore Mercedes-Benz, Basf, etc., etc., entrepreneurs, and we had uh, this um, workshop, and they were using the same language. These extremely uh, educated people, the same language that the Bild Zeitung was using, the failed Greeks. How can you afford not to be uh, to feel guilty of, about uh, your failure? Don't you feel failure? And I said failure or guilt is not inherited in our culture. Guilt, it's not. Why it's not? Because, I don't know why, because maybe because we, we, we have a heaven every, every summer, therefore we cleanse ourselves into <laughs> paradise. So since we have paradise, so there's nothing to, to worry about having in the future. I don't know, this is this whole different uh, talk. But this kind of collectiveness, which I, because the, this year, I didn't say about this year's uh, biennial, last year's biennial, finished in December, it was about Agora, and the name Agora, and it was about the commons. So it basically we created an Agora, an open space that you could exchange ideas, etc. What I sensed is that there is, and I'm ringing a bell here for, for all of us um, intellectuals, there, there is a, this uh, uh, danger of falling into um, uh, this uh, collective fad that has something reactionary into that. Whoever doesn't uh, follow this eco-communalism is a, a little bit out, not of, the, of the, something that's a fad and will finish, something for the future. I believe the lack of resources uh, massively moves people into something that is fundamentally uh, fundamentally reactionary, and I'm af afraid that all of us that we embraced it long before as a, as a way of life, 
being progressive, being uh, uh, ecologically conscious, etc., etc. Now that this has been everywhere around us, now it's turning into something uh, with many vices. That's some, something biopolitical about it. That I, I even sense it, and I don't say that uh, that was um, uh, a keynote that someone gave in the Biennale, but I sensed it in the words of this, this fiery uh, words of the people that took the stand and came, uh, came forth and spoke about this new vision about the future, which they created in the small communal spaces of agro-tourism. There is a huge agrarian uh, movement in Greece because there, there's nothing, nothing left, so we're talking about sustainable economy, etc., etc., etc. But all these things is also, it has the seed of reaction that is um, uh, fundamentally against our uh, collective uh, uh, gains of free spirit, of uh, free determination, etc. I know it was I was very broad, but uh, uh, in a way, it's a, also a response to things that uh, I said before. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, um, I think you you, you, you raised an um, uh, an important question, uh, and we'll hear from Catherine Gibson tomorrow morning, obviously, but. Of course, in the work of J.K. Gibson Graham, they, they also make the distinction, as was already mentioned, between being in common and community, because, of course, the, 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 there is the, the, the dark side of the community ideal is that you are with people who are exactly like you, right? So the, the community is something that enforces a certain identity, and those who cannot uh, live up to that, be part of that identity, is immediately excluded. So anyway, um, I'll give the so microphone uh, to you. I'm representing the North. Yes. That's a tough one, maybe. Uh, you can change position now. <laughs> Fortunately, there are a lot of uh, professionals from the Netherlands in the room who can help me. First, perhaps one comment. Um, I feel slightly uneasy about re-reproducing that divide mm. between North and South without nuancing this. Because we run a danger of of empowering the discourse of corrupt South and very orderly, hardworking North. And I think we need to be very careful about that. Or vice versa. Um, that would be all right for me. Um, so so I, I would like to try to figure out what's at stake here. And um, similar discussions again I had with Teatro Valle Occupato, I had with uh, uh, reclaiming the city uh, from Croatia. There are similar movements in Portugal, Spain, so it's that south that seemingly takes situation in its own hands because no other option is left. Um, I don't know where to go with this, but um, um, I think rather than thinking in uh, in or rather than reproducing that existent dominant discourse about why this divides, we need to understand, and you probably said it, we guys are ahead of you. You probably already live in the, how did you call it, dystopian, dystopian. future? That's, that awaits us somehow, that, that is to become commonality across the world, if one can be very um, blunt and, blunt and uh, simplistic. Um, how, to, how to connect that to the discourse that we're having here is, is rather complicated because, you know, I, I cannot offer a story, we don't have any funding available, etc., etc., but I fear the participatie maatschappij is precisely the demand to activate the population to do precisely this, take your uh, fate in your hands, uh, then we don't need to uh, count with you with public funding, et cetera, et cetera. It's, it's really a tricky concept. And I think one should not walk away from, the, from that possibility. I think one, as a, as a representative of the culture field and somebody who believes in institutions, genuinely, like myself, our demand needs to remain towards public funds. So I don't, wanna, I don't wanna say, okay, you don't give me money, I show you what I can do. That's the sentiment that actually operates on, uh, I don't know what the front or back of that neoliberal kind of appearance, and I like that front picture versus back picture, because that's exactly that paradox within which uh, we find ourselves. And that's why the Croatian, Croatian initiative that I quoted 
for me was an important example. It's not to walk away, it's not to raise whatever finger to say, we'll do it ourselves and much better. We hug one another, we do it ourselves, we are the community, we are the people who are going to do it. But do that and next to it request, um, uh, um, you know, shares for public funding and, uh, and figure out a way how to operate within this private, public uh, divide, which is not necessarily a divide any longer. Just for the situation, a situation uh, uh, of back. So, so similar issues, similar, similar issues are at hand here, only these are early signs that we probably are not capable yet of synthesizing, because we believe the story, this is a necessity, the austerity measures are a necessity, uh, while they are all always necessarily a political choice. Sure. We chose to do it this way. Um, the concrete situation of bug is um, yeah, a, typ a, a typical story. We do run on uh, mainly public funding, uh, mainly Dutch funding, uh, which is divided into the financial support from the City Council of Utrecht, which remains stable and we feel welcome in the City of Utrecht. And uh, the half of the funding used to be from the national government, which was the last round of decision making, was cut by 60%. With an argument that BAC does not engage in education enough. Uh, we do not um, enough um, engage with the aesthetic potential of contemporary art. And the third argument would be not enough commercial income. Um, we, we in the Netherlands did fail, I think. I, I look at the, at, the, at the field, at the representat representatives uh, of the field. I think we failed to address these issues politically. We marched from city to city um, uh, demanding, um, um, demanding not to change the situation. Well, we, we were not capable of uh, uh, dealing with the issue politically. There's, there's, there are the whole nuances to the local situation, uh, but one shouldn't go and debate or make a principle about the relationship between art and, uh, and art, art and culture, etc., etc. <clears throat> what does this mean for an institution, institution like BAC? I mean, in very pragmatic, practical terms, um, you know, when applying for funding uh, uh, in, the, in the financial round, we spent hours and hours debating with our board and with our colleagues, friends, supporters, what to do in this situation. You can always submit a plan that could potentially bring you funding. Uh, but our choice was to stick to the beliefs, trust, uh, trust the ideas we based on at the risk of not getting funding at all. And we envisioned two scenarios. One would be we will make it the other we will not make it. And we ended up with the third scenario we never counted with. We got half of the funding and we were in, in, in a complete trouble because what do you do? How do you fulfill the ambitions? Um, um, for us, uh, a solution is perhaps a sort of commoning, but not in the terms as I see around and find relatively problematic of going into your neighborhood, neighborhood um, uh, only, exclusively, and, and connect um, in, this, in these ways, but to try to see and test can that community within the community, with the common, be something else that you direct neighbors on your street? What would that mean? Is that another sort of community? Is it imagined community? Is it an international community? Is, it, is, is, there, is there another, another form uh, to connect to? Um, I think for us, we articulated three, three areas where we think we need to reorient ourselves as an art institution. And there's no new theory uh, about this, but those three areas are in the terms of content, in the ter terms of production, and in the terms of our audiences. In terms of content, there's probably in our, our case um, a little that we wanted to change, 
um, because it would be engaging in in the uh, in uh, in uh, in discourses of decolonization, not running to um, catch the, the the most chicest artists on the market, not to engage in writing or rewriting canon or anti-canon. Uh, but right, quite seriously connect the, the notion of artistic production to theory or knowledge production and to activism action. We used to joke about a, being AAA, institution of an AAA, uh, operating between art, academia and advocacy. That's the terrain that we kind of articulated for ourselves. The second shift, the second reorientation that we articulated for, our, uh, for ourselves in terms of production is indeed how this wonderful content actually becomes your method, how it becomes your structure. And that means seeking transversal, uh, transversal connections within your organization and try to understand where there's a connection between an overworked artistic director and an overworked um, um, a receptionist. What are the connections? So for me, it's not about equalizing the pay. For me, it's not about um, uh, necessarily telling each other how much who earns. It's for me to try to understand how in terms of resources, whether intellectual, other, other resources, financial, time, spatial resources, you can actually see those transversal connections within the, within the organization and how can you deal with them. And this comes down sometimes to such things that are in, the, in life of usual institutions, or institution almost impossible, such as closing down for half a year. Because you need to recharge. Because we, for example, only want to speak when we have something to say. And trust me, it's not all the time. <laughs> and then the third part in terms of audience, I don't talk about visitor numbers does not interest me. Some, somewhere in the beginning of, uh, of BUG, we even articulated zero visitors policy, <laughs> which meant we are not interested in visitors. We're interested in people who genuinely can have stake in the organization. We're not interested in that sort of participation that neoliberal order orders us to have, that kind of paternalistic artic uh, articulation of participation come and design my reception desk. Look how, you, how wonderfully we participate. But to speak to your audiences and see how you can share the resources you have with your audiences. Examples for that would be a work with a Roma community, for example. Example for that would be our uh, attempt to work with, for example, We Are Here Cooperative, uh, which is a co cooperative and artists and asylum seekers in the Netherlands who are essentially undeportable asylum seekers, or experimentations around the New World Academy um, um, that we, that we uh, established uh, together uh, of, uh, with Jonas Stahl, or uh, Jonas Stahl established together with, uh, with Bach, trying to see these transversal possibilities of sharing not only within your organization, not only with the professionals abroad, but with your audiences differently, than, than by this kind of pay by uh, visit, pay by view, leisure kind of constellation of things. Um, I think I think Former West is an example of of how uh, how we operate, uh, having envisioned Buck as a basis, as a base. That that word is not chosen innocently. We never decided ten years ago when we were establishing the institution. We never wanted to call ourselves a center. Center of what? We wanted to call ourselves a base, a basis, which we always envisioned as a minimum necessary structure, minimum necessary set of resources, whether intellectual, time, spatial, financial, and otherwise, that are there um, uh, willing and prepared in, in the constant state of preparedness to accommodate the visions that are coming from uh, from outside, essentially, from uh, various artistic and culture practitioners. But also being a base is a place from which you can fly out, if necessary. Fly out into another sort of context to conjoin resources with those who have resources we do not have. In other words, if it needs to be, we feel, when we have something to say in a form of large exhibition, we need to conjoin resources with institutions that have space, because this is what we do not have. Um, 
another way around. So if you imagine how, how Form OS operated from a base, from a home here in Utrecht, kind of connecting to a variety of larger, smaller, uh, bigger, extensive communities all around the world. And this, is for, uh, this has uh, for us also become a financial model of um, assuring existence of projects that wouldn't be possible just locally on the street here around the corner, because through these collaborations you can ambition another sort of resources. What does this mean for survival here in the Netherlands? Even if we manage to um, financially sustain the organization, we will lose the funding in the Netherlands according to current, um, current rules because those funds that we manage to, to figure out in this international, through these international collaborative networked collaborations do not qualify as commercial income. And that's basically the main, um, main um, criteria um, uh, that would allow you to receive so-called public funding. In other words, the institutions that are doing well commercially will be matched financially for public funds. Those who do not do well enough, in other words, try to do work that is not commercially sponsorable, maybe it is, I do not yet know how, those will not qualify for the funding. So um, what are the possibilities of the survival? Because I think that was the question to this uh, long introduction. Um, I think there are always possibilities to survival of an idea. But I don't want to just early enough give in to say, well, keep your public funds and we'll do it ourselves and better. Okay. <laughs> um, the time is getting quite late, so before Jonas gets up, I don't know if there's anyone who has a direct question. We'll get into a, I think we can talk about this and what happened earlier in the, in the general discussion in a few minutes, but maybe there are a few direct questions to any other. Direct question to, sorry, to um, Pocayo. The, the, you, you, end, you ended by saying, you know, by expressing this uneasiness with the, um, you know, what, what you call the sort of conservative uh, sort of nature of, of this, um, you know, co feeling of commonality, <coughs> right? Do you, you, you know what I'm referring to? Um, and, 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 and then you stopped. I mean, could you sort of try to articulate that a bit more? You know, what it is that makes you uneasy? You know, what, 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 um, I mean, because I, I, you know, I've got the same sort of feeling in sort of a different uh, context, but um, yeah, that'd be great, thanks. Do we have some time for that? Uh, I think it's a, a little bit um, a, big, a big topic to, to discuss. I, I gave a broad overview of my ideas in that. It's more of a feeling right, right now. Uh, you know, we get this money, this European money, as a loan. It's a loan. It's not an aid. I'm, I'm talking about Greece. But the, the cover of it, it's like it's an aid where were rescuing you. And it's, that's okay. You can sell whatever you like, in whatever package you, you, you like, as long as it's uh, sellable. But from our side, how can we so easily buy something for something totally different? We, we buy this, this aid alongside a manual of savoir fair, of uh, collective guilt, of um, going back to the, if I use this uh, neuro-linguistic thing that you said about reframing, going back to, the, to the, your, our past and doing a negative anchor there of being guilt, of being wrong, of doing wrong. And of course, a lot of things wrong happen to Greece. <laughs> of course, uh, nobody, nobody questions that. But what happens if you have now a, a new byproduct that comes with this loan that says that, okay, you have it, but now have also the guilt of, of your actions and of, how, of having to pay that because you know that you are doomed, that you can never pay it back. So it's a, a new vicious circle that goes way uh, uh, 
more ex uh, extended to our cultural uh, terrain, of course. Eh? Uh, but what happens when this comes to culture? That's a very strange uh, question. I see the more progressive of my friends embracing that, unquestionable, or other more progressive uh, friends of mine embracing the other, the other way, which is something uh, totally regressive go in a Luddite community without technology and this and that. We don't need uh, art. We don't need contemporary art. What beep is art, etc., etc. as uh, it asked. Uh, so we have all these new, very um, regressive uh, tendencies. It's, it's a, uh, I, I feel that we are in a, in a, now it's the melting pot. Now it's the, the time to to see who will survive and what Europe will be in the future. Therefore, now the catalyst has done its work, and now we are everything is boiling. And at the end, the homogenized thing should have the same qualities. Maybe it will be the this, uh, as, as I said, Protestant or whatever uh, northern calls that everyone is equal. Uh, there is a saying I believe in the Dutch culture says that whoever, whoever whichever uh, head goes ab above the the, gra the grass. It's cut. Whereas we in Greece have a different thing, that we believe in the, in the excellence of each one to be uh, the, best, the best person he can, and all together we make the best that we can. So it's a little bit different. But culturally, it's not, it's not uh, something that we have. So it's a very painful uh, procedure that we're going through. Maybe uh, Mao can uh, go much further than, than me in that. But when he said, for example, that uh, uh, about this middle class, the failure of middle class, we had a huge middle, middle class in Greece. I come from middle class myself. That's why I still have these kind of values, which was obliterated in a few years. And uh, then, when you have such a trauma, what positive can come out of such a trauma, out of such collective trauma? I'm not sure. I really question that. I see so much regression going on that I really question what, what happens. And something to link uh, between us, because we were kind of separate. Uh, I feel sympathy for what you, you will, will happen for you, because you don't have this immune system. When I said about the cockroaches, it was a, an euphemism of my bad, yeah. bad situation, because I'm not used as an artist to have uh, any kind of uh, support. But what happens with my, my fellow uh, Dutch artists who are used to, to, to have these. And at some point, someone says 50%, uh, as you said before, is cut from that. How can you survive? At least I know that our family, our structure, our the society is based on something that we can, it has a safety net. Maybe we will survive with that. I really don't know what you will do. You don't have any rural, uh, abandoned village that your ancestors used to cultivate olives, and at some point you can escape there. Do you? Maybe? You have? Okay, you have. You have <laughs> maybe a communal green place outside of Amsterdam that you grow your... Okay. No, you don't. Potatoes especially. Potatoes Okay. What? Yeah. May I make only a, a, a small comment? Check the mic so that everybody can hear. It's coming your way from the other. Okay, only a small uh, comment. Um, this is... You are still naive. Yes. Yeah, uh, which means Barbarian. you think but that you can, you, can, you can get a loan without, that there is a loan without Schuld. This is, without? Uh, uh, wait a minute, without guilt. <laughs> no, there is no. Uh, yes, there is no, this is precisely what I want to say. There is no. And this is uh, precisely in German language. I know. You, you, you I have didn't say that debt because you know and it. guilt in one and the I same know. word, the same which word. is Schuld. So the only difference is that uh, you know the truth of your situation, you know the separation, you see both, but it is uh, uh, the, the moment of, of your advance, so to say, in, 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 in the sphere of consciousness, yes. of the crisis. I, mean, I love it. Being conscious about the crisis. And this is uh, uh, how, where, precisely, the so-called South is ahead. <laughs> of sure, the so-called so-called north yes. in uh, terms of what what is uh, called a reality uh, yes. check. Yes, it's just a comment. No, no, it's a fantastic comment, no. and really, that was exactly the words of the Mercedes-Benz manager. <laughs> exactly the same words, and that was what 
put me in an alarm that this kind of adolescence and of, uh, of how naive we are or, or na how not in re reality we are in the South. No. When Heinrich Flashbeck, the economist, we, we, asked, we made a, uh, an economic form for the first time with the, not a, a quasi-economic form in the, in the Agora, but we, we had hardcore economists try to understand and dissect what happens today. He said, Drone, he's uh, German, huh? don't try to uh, mimicry our, ourselves. You will fail. We are Germans. It's totally different. Find what's best in you, what you are doing good, and try to do that. N not only, only you, but France, Italy, they will fail. Of course, Greece will fail uh, even, even worse. <laughs> but don't try to, to pretend that uh, you can ever embrace our values. You have your own values. And we do have our own values. Boris, I believe we have our own values. We have our own values and our own debts. And uh, our own so. debts. Uh, well, I just wanted to pick up on the debt guilt thing yeah. and link it, and I don't know how this is a bit of a leap, to Maria's, la the, where Maria ended with the, the desire not to give up on the idea of public funding. Because it seems to me there's some kind of relationship there between the idea of money as debt, money, guilt. I mean, of course, this is something that David Graeber talks about, and another idea of debt which is based structurally, it could be understood as a structural condition for the concept of public funding for culture, which is that it's not based on guilt, it's based on a desire and a, and a, communal, a communal decision that that is one of the things that we want to spend our money on. And so I just, it would be quite nice for us to kind of just pace that kind of relationship from the debt guilt to the idea of debt as something that is an ongoing relationship between all of us that is, you know, if I were to extend the metaphor slightly and maybe slightly too far, is one version of how uh, a commons is produced. Yeah, I mean, certainly in Graeber's language, it, he would say that. But, you know, that actually what we owe each other is one way of finding economic, structural, managerial, secretarial relationships. But I wondered, Maria, if you could just because you said it in such a way that um, it felt like it was difficult to hold on to this idea of public. Could you say, of public funding specifically, could you say something more about that? Is there anything else? Um, it is a complex debate and one should actually sit you know, with the Excel sheets and, <laughs> and show and, um, and articulate, but you know, the, um, indeed, um, there is structurally no difference uh, when it comes to the discussion of, of uh, debt uh, in what you discuss and our own situation. And you see what, what, the, what the general atmosphere is in the Netherlands, right? Uh, you know, articulated around, around an idea of a leftist hobby and, you know, parasites, you know, you're unable to produce your own um, income, that's why you're depending on this. So it's, it's, it's structurally, it's, it's uh, um, in the, in the same, um, same field. But, and, you know, this is just a naive call that um, uh, I think we should not evacuate the space. I think that's the biggest mistake uh, we could possibly do and continue demanding, essentially. And perhaps continue on creating, um, uh, uh, creating um, um, solidarities, crea uh, creating another, another, working on uh, towards a new legal structure and towards another sort of understanding of art in society. Because I think essentially the right-wing understanding of what art is, this elitist, whatever, blah, 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 and they are rich anyway, why should, etc., got us to where we are in the first place. Because we, we did not manage to articulate the meaning of art for society properly enough, I think. Mm. And we didn't, we didn't offer, or we didn't make enough visible this kind of transversal connections that, we de that we're making on a daily basis. Uh, to articulate why um, uh, it, it's worthwhile fighting for maintaining space for, um, for thinking otherwise for the society. 
And I think the biggest mistake that we've made that we just jumped onto the uh, economic argument of vegan. I think pretty much what hap uh, what happened in uh, in Britain in a way. Like, who, look how many tourists we get into the city. Look how much income there is. Da, 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 da. And that's where we the, where we the weakest, right? Mm. So, so I think it's all about our lack of capacity to articulate who we are, what is it that we, that we really do, and making the connections that we already do have, whether they are to education, to university, to other communities that are of crucial importance for the society, making those linkages visible. And I think we need to um, uh, continue insisting on doing this work well basically. This doesn't take away that we need to learn how to uh, work through neoliberal structure, which uh, um, involves other, other financial sources, but I'm really not sympathetic to that idea, let's get your own crowdsourcing and let's society show that, that you really need it. I think, mm. um, I think there are ways to do this otherwise. And I know this is a banal answer, but I, I genuinely believe um, in that possibility and I'm, I'm just willing to engage in um, continuing doing, trying to do so. I think this has maybe also to do with this dark side of community, you know, if you're dealing with crowdsourcing and so on. To, to a certain extent, you might also lose the possibility to speak against public opinion, mm. right, as a, as a cultural producer and as an institution. So that, that I think is one of the things that are, were important with the so-called arm's length principle. Mm. But I think we need to go to, we have, uh, for each of the, 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 the sessions in these two, uh, two days, we, we also invited a respondent to have a, if you will, kind of outside view on what we were talking about. And uh, hopefully that can spark a more general discussion on the topics and the methods that we are trying to employ. And uh, um, for the sessions today, it's, I would like to invite uh, Jonas Stahl, who's sitting here, to give the response you have been uh, scribbling all day. 